To those of you who know the X Factor judge who smashed up a contestant's guitar, I've got a story for you. One that's gonna make your head spin so hard, you'll be hanging from the ceiling fan with ice packs on your ass. You remember that insufferable temperamental judge, Dmitro Shurov, who had a colossal meltdown and smashed a contestant's guitar on the X Factor? Well, this absolutely walking disaster has somehow been chosen by Eurovision to pick the songs for their competition. I mean, seriously, what kind of parallel dimension did we just step into? It's like trusting a blindfolded monkey with a hand grenade, bound to end up in chaos. But before we dive into the steaming pile of garbage that is Eurovision's decision, let's take a trip down memory lane and relive the glorious moment when Dmitry Shurov revealed himself to be the human equivalent of a dumpster fire. Picture this, Sergei, humble contestant, takes the stage with his guitar, the cherished gift from his late father. He starts playing, and it's pretty clear this isn't the second coming of Jimi Hendrix. But the guy is giving it his all. And then like a lightning bolt of pure, unfiltered douchebaggery, Dmitry Shurov storms the stage, rips the guitar from Sergei's hands, and smashes it to smithereens. All while looking like the biggest prick this side of the Mississippi. Now any sane person would look at this situation and think, hey, Maybe this guy isn't the best person to represent our musical competition. But Eurovision, in their infinite wisdom, decided to take a different route. The route that leads straight to the ninth circle of hell. They went ahead and chose this mediocre at best musician, who only got to where he is because he was born with a platinum spoon up his ass, to be the one to choose their songs. It's like asking a tone-deaf walrus to be a vocal coach. Just a recipe for disaster. So let's explore the thought process behind this god-awful decision. Eurovision must have been sitting around thinking, hmm, we get to choose our songs that will ensure maximum entertainment value and minimum public outrage. And then some genius in the back of the room pipes up and says, I know, let's get the guy who had a full-blown temper tantrum and destroyed a contestant's prized possession on live television. That'll go over well with the public. I mean, come on. It's like handing a flamethrower to a pyromaniac and hoping they'll use it responsibly. You'd think that after witnessing Dmitry Shurov's meltdown, Eurovision would be sprinting in the opposite direction like their lives depended on it. But no, instead they decided to embrace the chaos and bring them on board. Like watching a train wreck in slow motion, you can't look away. But you know it's gonna end up in disaster. So what does this mean for Eurovision? Well, I can only imagine that their competition is going to be a glorious shit show of epic proportions. We're talking Titanic level disaster complete with icebergs and people screaming for their lives. With Dmitry Shurov at the helm, you can expect a mix of mind-numbingly mediocre tunes and more drama than the season finale of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Eurovision's decision to bring Dmitry Shurov on board is baffling, to say the least. It's like sticking a bull that's suffering from a nicotine fit into a cigar shop and expecting everything to come out in one piece. But one thing's for sure, though. All we can really do at this point is prepare to watch the disaster unfold before our very eyes. I can only imagine the chaos that's about to ensue with Dmitry Shurov's impeccable judgment, and by impeccable, I mean fucking abysmal, leading the way. And let's not forget the most important lesson here. No matter how big of a douchebag you are, it seems there's always a chance for redemption, or at least a continuation of your questionable career in the wacky world of Eurovision. Who knew that smashing a guitar Throwing a tantrum and being an all-around asshat could actually land you in a gig in one of the world's most famous music competitions. It's like the universe is rewarding this guy for being a grade-A set of swinging donkey nuts. But hey, who are we to judge? Maybe Eurovision is onto something here. Maybe the key to a successful competition is to embrace the madness and let chaos reign. Or maybe they're just completely out of their damn minds and have no idea what they're doing. Either way, one thing's for sure. Either Eurovision is going to turn into a full-on butt trumpet circus, or enough people will have let the powers that be know that the show will be better off without that tantrum-throwing rich kid judge calling the shots. Eurovision's brilliant decision was just announced recently, and we will not be seeing this crap officially until late May of this year. Until then, I'll just be over here laughing my ass off at the absurdity of it all. Make sure you like and subscribe. You are now in the family. Thank you for watching.